So as usual, guys, I wish you all a very warm welcome and a good evening here at Carnation. Our guest today is Sixel. Sixel is from Voxnet. Sixel, um, it's great to have you. Welcome. Thank you so much. Hi. Hi, everyone. Sixel, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you're involved into Voxnet? Well, my name is Ferris. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty much a founder of the Voxnet, which we've been working for over, over one year. Um, I mean, the way I get involved, it's just we've been doing some development as a freelancers before. And, and, you know, I was a gamer. I was a gamer all my life. And the problem with the in that games nowadays, it's just, um, it's in a traditional, you know, financial world, it's really hard to raise funds. You know, what I'm trying to say, just to, just to get your project from the ground and start functioning. And with crypto, it's a little bit easier. And that's why, uh, you know, uh, our, the people that I worked with before, I just uh, went to them and said, like, hey, I have this idea, you know, and we have all the skills because we've done this kind of job before for other people, for, for them to have their own, you know, stuff. But, I mean, this time of life, I think we're already growing enough because we all, all of us, like, over two years old, you know, and we can start doing our own venture. And that's how we came up with this Voxnet idea, you know, because uh, it's like the game that the idea of the game was not to build a game where people will grind for hours, for days or years, like World of Warcraft. But it's more like for people who, for example, you, you came from work and you have like a little 30, 40 minutes to play, to have fun with your friends. You know, that, that, that kind of people with that that would play our game, like the people that we are ourselves, you know. Mm -hmm. so, so that's what, how i get to the idea of doing this you know mm -hmm. so what i can hear from you are a developer yes or a programmer yeah, how old yeah. are you? may i ask mm -hmm. what was the question uh how old are you 33 33 and how long are you already doing this kind of stuff well with unity like almost five years Okay, so you got some experience there. Oh, that can be easily seen and evaluated just by looking at the product that we have delivered, you know. Even by looking at the state of the product the way it was on the day of launch, which was three months ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to say, I really, really like the game. It just makes a lot of fun to play. And it's also, uh, how shall I call it, a, a friendly graphics design you know you you get a good feeling you get good vibes when you play the game you just have a lot of fun and that's the, the good, really yeah good. thank thank you so much i really appreciate you know the kind words because this project is kind of personal to me since i spent almost over one year of my life you know for it and um uh, it just you know you know this kind of the platform that we have it's it's a little different you know from what people used to see and it's actually easier to evaluate and understand because you can see all that development you know that's been going under the platform rather than when you look at the project with, which just gives you the promises and they just like give you the sweet talk you know like the way that their project gonna be and they have nothing to show you at the voxnet you know I, I i don't i don't i'm not the best speaker i don't know how to shill or speak good but i know how to code and i can just pretty much show you my product and uh give you a walkthrough and you can decide for yourself and you, if you see value in this and if you, if you see effort in this you know but personally me and my team we have invested our soul into this project you know and anyone who is not blind can actually see that yeah, that's for sure you got a really really good quality game there is no no question it's not it's not only the game the the voxnet it's not it's not only it's not the game the voxnet is a platform and the game is just the proof of concept the main thing, what makes us different, we don't focus on only one side of the utility. We're actually building a sustainable ecosystem, which implies not only one utility, but, you know, in order for it to be sustainable, to be interesting, interactive, it could have like a bucket of tools, which, because um, so, I see some familiar faces in here. For example, I see uh, Auguste. Do I say your name right? 
Um, he plays the game every day and he uses the tools that we delivered for people, you know, and this is the whole idea of it. You know, we believe that the product that we built can actually be adapted. It's not the product for you to just come buy the token and flip another day. You, you know what I mean? The, like the people, um, I see the, the reason why I was trying to build this product, not just to build anything, just, just to have like some other project out there where there's at a thousand projects in crypto. I, I actually wanted to build something that will be usable for people. And when I see like, you know, sometimes people coming in and they say like, uh, 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 my kid likes the game. My kid played it. And this is what inspires me a lot because my personal belief, you know, for, for the project to be disruptive and to be adapted, it should be under, it should be understandable for non-crypto people. If non-crypto people see value in that, they can, you know, interact with that, have fun with that, that kind of project has legs to survive. And, and all other projects who, for example, if your project doesn't bring anything to non-crypto people, right? I mean, once the speculators are gone, the, there is nothing, nothing left. So we, we, have, we have a little different approach, as you see, and that's why I didn't want to do any giveaways, you know? I actually wanted to have the people who would have a patience to listen and to evaluate the project. And what I'm trying to say, and not be here just for a couple of tokens. Mm -hmm. No, I, I totally get your point. Uh, would you say, is, is it something where people who only want to invest have a, how shall I say, um, the, the benefits? Um, would you say when you also play the game, you got benefits as to people who only invest in the token? Yeah, of course. And uh, we have built the whole economy around that. Uh, we call it the dividend system. Basically, our game, besides of the traditional PTE, where people just go and earn whatever for free, has a wagering system. So it's a, it's a essentially gambling. Some of you actually played with me before. And um, so the, this gambling system, it's like a casino, you know, where people play and the house keeps the cut. And that cut goes, uh, it goes uh, pretty much, it's, it's spread around the gaming accounts in the form of dividends. Also, we have a, for example, in-game store, right, which sells uh, consumables. Like, for example, um, Archer needs an arrows to shoot. So every time you play, you need an arrows. So you can pick those arrows up or you want to save your time, you can, you can uh, just buy those arrows from the store. And every time someone buys something from the store, the 100% of the revenue is shared across the token holders. So that, that's how it goes, right? I mean, we have a staking and for people to participate in the ecosystem, they need to uh, deposit their tokens into the treasury. And when they withdraw from the treasury, there's a little modest tax, which is 4%. And that 4% doesn't go to our pocket. It's 100% of it goes across the token holders. So you see, we, ho we have like a, whole system of the, you know, like the revenue comes from the wagering, from the store, from the uh, treasury withdrawals, and all, all of it goes to the token holder. So pretty much when you own a token, it's like owning a share of the platform. And whatever the activity in the revenue platform gets, you get the share of it. I, I hope I was trying to explain, you know, this, this point. Mm -hmm, I got your point. Um, so in the in the website was written fifty percent of all revenues. Um, it's hundred percent now. Yeah, we have bumped it up a few weeks ago. Just forget to change in the website. Ah, because okay, hundred percent of the revenue. We are really open-minded, and someone came up and he pointed out that with the per perpetual sorry, I can say this word properly in English perpetual markets. You know, uh, usually mm -hmm. have a hundred percent sh sharing a uh, profit sharing system. And I said, why not? Let's try to share 100% and see how that goes, you know? Okay. So right now it's 100%. And people do receive the dividends. I'm pretty sure some of the people in this room can confirm that. Okay, that sounds great. Um, by the way, I was wanted to ask uh, prior, how big is the team at the moment who is working on the game? It's, uh, so pretty much uh, in-house team is three, three people. This, uh, and we also have addition, uh, see, see the gas, uh, our um, business development, you know. So four people, I would say four people, yeah, four people together. Okay, that's 
pretty pretty well done for for people I have to say so congratulations man. because it's not about the quantity it's about the quality you know you there, there there's people who you know um i mean you you can have a team of 20 people and then again a delivery even half of what we have delivered that's also like it's possibility you know but sometimes you you can have like a one two like really smart guys you know that can actually pick up the product from the ground mm -hmm. um because i was i was wondering um you said when you're gonna play the game there are consumables you need like for example arrows or, or things like that yeah Would you and this is actually what spins the game economy it's a really important point of the game or any game the game should have an economy right mm -hmm. so That's besides of the consumables we do have like a bunch of other stuff like we we sell like unique skins um like uh, besides of the arrows there's like a health potions you know the buff scrolls also we are building the global marketplace and because we we just have delivered the loot system so the loot system allows you pretty much the way it works it uh whenever you kill a bot or the player you have a chance to acquire an uh, item and it depends like uh, you have a common items or you have a rare items the common items they're like one percent chance to acquire which would be your consumable so you know and there's also like a rare items which would give you the stat bonus and those has only 0.1 percent to acquire and um essentially like we're building the marketplace and it's pretty much done we just need to connect it with the back end and people will be able to sell their loot you know which is another like a point of the revenue because we can we can um, have a little tax on their sales like let's say three percent and share that three percent across all the token holders okay but let's say for example you got someone who is like a real bad player um yeah. and always losing is there a certain point where he needs to buy some voxnet so he can play or are you always able to play although you don't own any tokens uh, basically you can always play even though you don't own any tokens but if you want to earn from the game you need to hold the tokens because even because I, I was talking all this time about the bet you earn about the dividends but we also has a have a traditional pte right the play to earn and <clears throat> that pte also comes with a twist because um, it follows the formula which we built it called it calls the proof of play pretty much um instead of giving a fixed payment to people their um rate token per kill it depends on how many tokens they hold uh if, for example if you hold 10,000 tokens you can get one token per kill but if you hold thousand tokens you only get 0.1 token per kill you, you see the math here right mm -hmm so so to answer your question comprehensively yes they can they can play for free but in order to earn even if they're trying to earn like from traditional ways like just p2e without the gambling itself you know they still need to hold some tokens and this is makes sense because you know i mean if you are here just to play the game i mean here it is play it but if you're trying to make some money you need to invest into the ecosystem okay there are three different game modes as far as i know like cash right. game tournament and deathmatch what what are the main differences between them there's a five game modes and there's two gambling modes so uh okay. the cash game with the tournament are the gambling modes and the difference among them pretty much uh with the cash game it counts when you play you have a leaderboard and game leaderboards right let's say like 15 people playing and the the cash game will count frags and uh, the frags pretty much at the end of the game with the cash game you will get payout proportional to your frags right and the cash game would count all the players at the match so no matter no matter if you came even the last one but you made one frag right and the other guy made let's, let's say 10 frags you still get something as long as you made one and the tournament is a little bit different because it only calculates top three places so um just an example five players and 10 tokens uh, wagering fee so it's, it comes to 50 tokens on the price pool right 
at the end of the game, the system will split the tokens proportional to your frags. In a cash game, it will be all players who played in the game. In a tournament, it's going to calculate on the first three uh, top spots. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's the way the gambling mods work. And uh, our gambling mods are working with four game modes, which is uh, deathmatch, uh, team deathmatch, hardcore, and PvE. So the deathmatch, uh, you know the deathmatch, right? You can fight with bots, and you can also fight with players. It depends mm -hmm. on the on the setup of your particular room. Uh, the team deathmatch is pretty much um, one team versus another. You you when you set up a lobby, you would have to pick your team. While in a traditional deathmatch, you don't pick your team. Like a, it's like a free for all type of thing, you know. And um, there's a PVE, which is um, pretty much it's um, a race. A players versus bots. Um, so the players always going to be on one team, and the bots always going to be on another team. And it's essentially whoever kills the most bots. So you know, it's also worse with the gambling. Like five people, ten tokens each. At the end of the match, whoever kills the most bots gets the most uh, slice of the pri prize pool. Mm -hmm. Also, we have a hardcore, uh, which is uh, the way it works. You get killed, you go back to lobby, you, you want to enter, you have to pay again. So you make the price pool fatter. Mm -hmm. So you always have to pay if you want, so like a rebuy if you want to. Yeah, 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 exactly. So what it essentially makes, you know, the, the price pool for the particular match becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, someone gets killed, he gets humiliated, he can, he has feelings, he wants to go back, well, you know, prove his enemy wrong, he will pay again. Mm-hmm. So that's as far as what we have functional right now, you know? I mean, five modes, two gambling modes, uh, bet to earn, play to earn, staking, dividends. We also, like, uh, the whole platform, uh, it's a cross-platform experience. So, for example, you play on, on the website, but your friend pr pr uh, plays on mobile. You guys still play together in the same server. You guys, you know, you guys play together pretty much. Mm -hmm. uh, the app also... Working on oh, yeah. Android, iOS? Can you say uh, on iOS? Yeah. I mean, it's it, with iOS, you know, uh, it's it's uh, it's not a like a deve it's another development thing. So I, I can explain you in details. Uh, with iOS, if you want to publish your product under the name of the company, you need to have a legal entity. And you need to have a DUNS number. You can Google it, it's DUNS number which usually, you know, when you request the dance number, you, you wait like four or five weeks for it to come. And then you can you can publish your game under the, like, the Voxnet name, not under my personal name, you know? Okay, so... So, so it's, I... more, it's, it's more oh. like has to do with the Apple Store and, the, and their requirements, which has some paper, paper, you know, paperwork that we're doing right now. Okay, so can I play the game on my iPhone at the moment or do I have to wait a little longer? You have to wait a little longer because the, you're, you know, I mean, with Android it's easy. I just, I, uh, you can go to the Google Store or I can just send you APK, you click on it, it's installed, you know. And with the iPhones, uh, there's the Xcode that works a little different. Okay, so there is no web application I could use on the phone? No, no it has to be at the store. Ah, okay, but it's planned, so I can I can pray for it. Yeah, it... yeah, well, no, of course, it's not planned. It's 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 hundred percent gonna be delivered. Ah, as okay. I said, it's 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 the only matter of the paperwork at this point. We just need to wait for the DUNS number to come in in the mail, so we can it's... register the game at the store under the Voxnet name, because I can I can publish the game like even yesterday, but it would be like not the Voxnet. It would be my my own name. That's it's just the store policy, you know, works yeah. a little bit different from the Google store. And it doesn't make uh, as good as, how should I say, it doesn't look as professional if you just... Uh, from exactly, a, a, exactly, yeah. yeah. I mean, under the developer, you want to see the Voxnet, you don't want to see like a John Jones, you know what I'm trying to say? Mm, uh, I get your point. Is it possible to, to um, make custom tournaments with your friends? Yeah. So, so you could could make some tournaments within Telegram communities, for example. You could just like open up a lobby with certain amount of players and let them play against each other. I mean, 
At this, we were planning to deliver automated tournament system in future, but right now the way it would be, you would set up a lobby, and if there's no one is joining, I mean, there's no people looking for the game, right? You would just mm -hmm. come to the group and say, hey, who wants to play, you know? And the, 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 let's say um, you you on the European server, you just say, say people, okay, choose the uh, European server and the name of the room and, the, you know, the, the amount of the wagering fee, and people just usually join. I do have, like, uh, many examples on uh, our YouTube of the real wagered matches with the community, you know, if you want to take a look at it. I'm going to post a link in the Telegram. Yeah, please. I just saw the trailer yesterday and I was like, yeah, it's it's really well made. You never played the game? I was just watching it. The problem is I'm... You, you should come play with us. It's it's what? really fun. The you should come I'm... play with us sometimes, yeah. The problem is I only got an iPhone, so I'm basically working 24-7 from my iPhone. And the laptop I got is like really old and, and just just there for the charts anymore. So that was my, how shall I say, my entrance barrier at the moment that I couldn't play it on my mobile. Oh, yeah. Well, we will find, we will have an iOS version very soon. Then I'm the first one to play it, promise. Absolutely. Do you have in mind, um, do you, or do you think that someday uh, people will be able to, or could be able to live off that game? For example, like X Infinity. Uh, of course, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure they already can. Um, even if they would choose not to gamble and play the P2E, right? Uh, we have what do we have right now? 25 tokens per day daily cap. I mean, depends where which country you're from, right? We all have a different um, GDP per capita, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And life what? expectations. I mean, it depends uh, what kind of... I mean, with the gambling, you know, only sky's the limit. You, you, if you find the player, let's say you, you bet $1,000 and you, you can find someone who would bet $1,000, you can and you win, you can make that in two minutes. But as far as the dividends and the PT goes, you know, people are making money already. It just were really, really under the radar right now, you know. And of course, as more the, as more activity gets into the game, more money people would make. And um, as, as far as the PTE goes, you know, um, I mean, when when our token was a dollar per token, at that point people were making twenty five dollars for playing two two hours just PTE. I mean, for some countries that isn't money, I would say. What would you say are your most active markets, like South America, Asia, Europe, America? Oh, it's, it's uh, you know, it's really hard to say. I can, instead of me saying, I can just um, screenshot, you know, uh, let's say I screenshot, uh, I, I'll make a screenshot and post right here. One yeah. second. Can, can I post on your own? Yeah, sure. So this is, uh, let's say, last five, six, seven, last ten who logged in. That's their countries, okay? Mm -hmm. And you will see why it's hard to say. You see, like, they're all from all, all over the world. Okay. How many players you got a day on average or a month? Is there, is there a number you can tell us? Yeah, I can share with you, actually. Instead of me uh, telling you, I'm just going to drop, you know, a graph like this. This is a statistic that comes from our backend. Better like this, right? I mean, numbers. Mm -hmm. See, it's uh, 23 daily active users. I mean, something where we are still like really, you know, we're really, really unknown project i would say we only have like 300 holders or something okay yeah i also saw your your you you were going like like really slow in the beginning i think we we already talked like last year in december if i'm not mistaken some somewhere around that 
And I was, I was just watching a chart. I think you, you went like under the radar for quite some time and then the chart suddenly... Well, but... you, you, you know, it depends if you measure the success of the project and the prog progress of the project, the chart wise, because our development chart always been, you know, on a bull market. Like if you will, would go through the pinned messages that we have, you would see how, how much we have delivered in these three months. It's, it's never was silent or dull moment we always had some updates, not, not updates like just announcement for the sake of announcement. We have real development updates, which you can just go in the game and check for yourself and you say if you like it or not, you know? No, it was so, not about not making any progress. It was just like uh, thinking about the perspective from, from walking under the radar, because mostly when, when a crypto project, you know, got a lot of action and movement in their chart, a lot of people um come come into contact with with the project that's why i was saying like you you went under the radar because it was like uh from the from the chart perspective a uh, relatively quiet and and steady growth yeah yeah i, I totally un understand what you mean you know i just uh, the, the my point is you know the chart tells the story for the project which only has a website chat and the promises you know and mm -hmm. our story is much more deeper than that. I mean, the development wise, we've always been busy, you know. And if you mean that we we had we just we just had the recent chart movement, I mean that's not something that I can control, and not something that I, I would comment. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, sure. So, what would you say? Um... Are your plans to 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 grow the the community on a on a healthy and um, what it's called organic way? Well, Are we you... have this brilliant addition to our team, Gus, and he really works. He really works very hard, you know, um, to with the partnerships and with the whole business development thing, and we have. Uh, few partnerships that we signed up a couple of days ago, but we can't really, you know, uh, we can't really name them yet, but and they, we, we, uh, he's going to announce it really soon, I'm pretty sure, you know. I mean, in order for you to grow, since you have a product, you need to attract uh, users to your product, you know, and <laughs> the best way to do that is to form partnerships with the other functional products. Ah, okay, and you can can tell us yet about them. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Okay. So, but as you... many in this room knows, if I say something, it happens. So it just—it's not a question if it happens. It's just a matter of when we can announce it. You know. Mm -hmm. Would you say? Would you say um, that Twitch is a good uh, platform to to gain users or w which is the the medium you are mostly tended to to grow your user base you are asking developer about something that the other people you know do i mean i, I hope i mean i, I don't see that <laughs> gas is with us is here uh, gas are you here yeah yeah i'm here i'm here how are you guys yeah. I'm, I'm, this is I'm your turn bro <laughs> How are you? So, uh, excellent question. I, I'm, I'm going to just tackle this question and leave the stage for, for Zex. Uh, in terms of growth, uh, we're following different uh, different routes. It's, uh, for us, it's not about Twitch or, or YouTube or which channel. Uh, it's about uh, how to attract Web3 players, Web3 gamers. Uh, the game today has all the factors. We have been running tournaments, and that was our first... Uh, a growth hack and onboarding players uh, that have been successful so far. Uh, we're having those active players uh, on a weekly basis uh, and uh, it has been growing. The only thing that why you still see a little bit on the leaderboard, the, the mobile app on Google Play isn't yet 
uh, have the full uh, accounting system. We have a version that is an APK. However, there is a, a process that we follow in the company that we need to be sure that 100%, at least you're never sure 100% in development, but you need to be sure that there is very minimum margin of error and the players are happy with the current version that we have, which Zex always shares with the community. So once we have both the mobile and the PC, we will have more uh, ways of growing because we have noticed that one of our first tournaments, we had 600 players trying to play through our mobile uh, because most of Southeast Asia play on mobile, not on PC, because PC is more expensive. Zach mentioned the GDP per capita issues in terms of gaming. So that's why the first uh, we are growing on PC. Growing, growing PC is slow. Uh, because you're targeting a more niche market. However, once we have the mobile version out there, you will see with the existing partners, with the existing strategy we have, the number of players will multiply. Okay. Thanks for the insight. Yeah, no worries. Um, I'm here. Uh, I'm just going to mute myself for any question. Okay, now I know about that. Um, you you were saying you you got an um NFT marketplace, and later on it's planned that the NFTs will also be tradable on other marketplaces. We don't have an NFT marketplace yet, but we're planning to deliver it. Yeah. Okay, is there a certain date when we can uh, count with that? Something approximately. Yeah, like I, I think. Uh, so go ahead. Yeah, so, sorry, Zach. Uh, I think it's worth pointing here that right now you can send uh, in-game items to your friends in the game. So this is like the first functionality in terms of trading with each other. But the official trading of a marketplace, uh, it's it's in development. I will let that for for Zach to answer. Basically, in order to you know bring the NFT system, you can just bring any NFT system. It has to fit into the ecosystem, right? So as the guest mentioned, we just uh, made this future where people can send the items in game. So that's already, right? Like, think about it, that's in future, they would be able to send NFTs in game. So uh, I already mentioned that we just built a global marketplace and we are in the midst of connecting the marketplace to the backend. Think of that as a marketplace for those NFTs, you know, and the NFT contract itself, it's only one day of work, you know. It's mostly we need we need to work on the design of NFTs itself, and I would say, like, once we finish the marketplace, it, realistically, I would I would give ourselves like a month or so, you know. Of course, development takes some time; so it, it it won't happen in one day. Okay, so I can already trade it, but just with friends. So it's it's just for me to to find someone who wants to trade at the moment. Yes, correct. Did. Do you think about um, doing maybe a kind of story mode at any any later later on? No, that's a little different genre, you know, of the game. It's ah, a but... battle royale with the elements of the RPG. So, so there's um, yeah, audience. it's just with, with the the whole the, the lore just won't fit in it, you know. Mm -hmm. And also the story mode, it requires a lot of scripting, you know, and I mean, it's more like a, for a single player type of stuff, you know, and our game a little bit different. It's more like a competitive type of game. Mm -hmm. I get your point. You you need the, the, the right audience and it would somehow interact when you, you got two different target groups. Yeah, I mean, I mean, are you familiar with the games like Fortnite? Yeah, sure. There's different seasons, but there's no story mode, right? It's it's like a 100% competitive game where people compete between each other. So it's the same concept, but uh, we, but with addition, you can actually put real money, you know, on your competitions. That, that's the way in Voxnet. Okay. And I saw that you also got like different different seasons and different different uh, times of the day and everything. But basically, every map that we build, it's like a little living environment. 
let's say the forest map that we have, it has the full 24 hour cycle, you know, and depends on the time of a day, the environment ch changes itself. Like in the nighttime, you get the mushrooms glowing and the fireflies firing around the fire cam and all, all this, you know, reflection illumination of the moon. And when the daytime comes, the whole scene changing, there's like a butterflies, you know, there's a shadows, stuff like this. But as far as the seasons goes, you usually get to it, you know, when you have nothing else to do the development wise and we have a huge list, you know, which we plan to deliver. We will get to the seasons just a little bit later, you know. For example, as as you mentioned before, uh, IOS, right? This would be much more priority than making a new season or something. Yeah, sure. Sure, sure. Because you see, like, the new season, it is good. It's going to keep existing public entertained, you know. But IOS will open the gates for completely different people to come and enjoy the experience you know what i'm trying to say so like uh, it would be it would have a much higher order than another season or so, or, or, or another map which will have like five maps already i think mm -hmm. no no I, i get your point do you 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 just talked about um there are much much uh more urgent things or more important things at the moment what would you say are the next few big steps for your project so I, uh, basically, th this week we're gonna push big mobile update because um, so th this one already will have a wallet connect and the whole the mobile client will be like a standalone client, you know, without the need for you to go to the website and do the deposits and withdrawals. So uh, after that, um, w the, we're planning to finish because we we already was working on it, but we just dropped dropped it at some point to focus on something else. Uh, the earning dashboard, because since we have so many, you know, ways for you to earn, people should understand well what what comes from where, you know. And from there, we need to finish the global marketplace, and we can jump on the, you know, NFTs. So uh, that, 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 that's all we have planned for, like the short short term future. Mm -hmm. uh, you you just uh, made up a question in my mind. Will I be able to to rent out my items or my NFTs? Yeah. Okay, so I can just let other people play. As, as, you, as you asked before, as you asked before, like, would our NFTs be tradable anywhere else besides of our own marketplace? And the answer to that, it's actually hidden in what Gus told you already. That um, most of our partnerships actually based on on that, you know that that uh, our nfts will be pretty much on like everywhere where we can form a partnership ah, so you're currently forming a lot of partnerships with with nft marketplaces that's correct yeah ah okay okay now i got it so all this as i told you before like you know it's not just you don't make nft just to make nft you have to make a solid ground and that's what we were doing um like you can send items between friends, right? That gives you the opportunity to send NFTs between friends. The, then the global marketplace would give you the opportunity. To... So I think we got a short delay. He will be back soon. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think Zach got a call and uh, that on his mobile and he got cut off. Yeah, he, he's going to join. Sorry, the, yeah. the, the networking. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I stopped on the global marketplace. That will be your uh, pre-update for the, the, the NFT marketplace within the game, you know. And then those partnership, it's like another uh, piece of the puzzle. And when, we come, when we're done, all those pieces will form a big picture. But at least right now, you can already see th what the picture would be, you know, For, from if you would connect all those points together, you would understand. Mm -hmm. No, I got your point. And I think it's, it's, it's really great to see that you put the quality of the game and just making a fun game in, in, in the priority, you know, because I'm, I'm 
dealing with lots of projects, lots of games. And most of them, if you're going to talk to them, they're always just about their economy and how you can earn from them and what you can buy. But when, when I'm talking to you, you know, I really get the feeling that it's, it's for you. It's like a personal matter just to, to, to make something good. And in, in my opinion, that's the most important thing to, to create great things. I mean, of course, I understand those people as they're trying to make their product appealing to the, the investors, right? They're trying to like, hey, will you, if you invest in our project, you will be able to make this and this and this and this. But in reality, if the product not not being used, you know, it's not going to make anything. So as a developer, you should concentrate on delivering the good product. The blockchain mechanics, we already, we already have it. We already knocked that down. You know, we already delivered it, which is the most important thing because the game could be anything for pretty much tomorrow we can just an example we can make another game and you know publish it under the voxnet and here's you have two games with the same token it's uh, the blockchain mechanics are there and, uh, and this is most important thing that we worked over almost one year and the, the, the game experience it's something that we are shaping right now that, that's the way to put it Where you guys, can you guys hear me? Ah, sorry, I accidentally muted myself. Um, so did I get that right, that it would be possible to create other games within the Voxnet ecosystem, which are also contributing to the, to the whole thing? Yeah, we already have, we already have some, something that we worked before, but kind of like stopped on it, you know? I mean, so, it's that's why I said it's more. It's all. It's more about being, a, you know, a platform rather than one game. And okay. it's more about the the set of the blockchain mechanics, the set of the tools that we offer, rather than the game of the game. And you know, and this is was the most time consuming part to build the whole backend and to get all these pieces to work together. The PTE, the bet you earn, the dividends, you know, all that, all that stuff. And the game, the game experience, it's something that's being shaped with the community, actually, you know, like, for example, we get a lot of feedback, like, hey, I mean, let's change this or change that, you know, when we we'll always listen, if it makes sense, we, we change that. So the, the game shaping, it's, it's never ending process, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, if the yeah. game development stop, this is a dead product right there. Um, mm -hmm. What is constant here, it's the blockchain mechanics that you get. The, you get you we will have more of them like nft but this is the the core of it you know the, this is what what makes us at platform not the game it can have 10 games but it would work under the same mechanics that we have mm -hmm. I, i'm sorry if i'm being too kind of like crazy about the details you know but as i said you're asking developer about the developing you know and i'm just no, trying to be comprehensive it's 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 great. It's just like a little hard to 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 really get it, but I think I got it. So in theory, in in, the, in theory, it would be possible to to for example to make something like a Mario Kart in in the same style as the current game and just add it to the ecosystem. Exactly. So think about the blockchain mechanics that we offer just as a solid foundation for the village. And in village has one house right now. Beautiful house. I think our game is the best game. I mean, honestly, show me the game which is better than our game. Show me. I'll make better game. And I don't think you will be able to show me. But even now, like, let's say this one house, beautiful house. But this foundation can have many houses, you know. And that's, mm -hmm. this is our end goal, to be a platform rather than just like a one type of the experience mm -hmm. and so, not to, to put, you know, to, to not, uh, not to be empty words and stuff. I can even um, send you a trailer. We've worked on this game, but we kind of stopped it, you know, but this is what, what we're thinking going to be the next game for the Voxnet. Let me just drop great. in your room. So if I got it correct, Voxnet is because I, as it seems, I misunderstood that. Voxnet is not essentially the name of the game, 
So Vox no. net stands for the Th whole. That's what net, net stands for network, you know. Okay, so it's, it's, it stands for the whole ecosystem and all what's... Exactly, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of misconception about our project. People look at the game and they say, oh, it's a P2E project. I mean, this project is anything but not the P2E project. And P2E, it's probably like only like 2% of what we have under the hood, you know? Like, just ch check this one. This is uh, like uh, if you played the Twisted Metal when you was a kid, this is the core idea, you know? Um, it's like a PvP on the cars. So, if I get it correct, you are not limited to the graphics either, so you can put out any any kind of game. No, uh, as, I, as, I, as I said, like, um, I'm the least proficient guy in my team, and I have a five years experience with the Unity. And don't take my words, just go over the game, play the game. I mean, whenever you have a laptop hit me up, I will give you some tokens and I will even supply with you Ethereum so you can test it for free. And just tell me what you think, you know? I'll do so, thanks. I, I will pay for the feedback. I, I really <laughs> value the feedback because feedback helps me to make the whole experience better. Without the feedback, I don't know how can I make it better, you know? Yeah, I get it. I really have to admit, um... I've seen a lot of games and I think this is like the the game which I think I would have the most fun with, you know, because I kind of like this this battle arena games, you know, where you just can play with your friends. Maybe you can shoot some spells, you know, a little little hack and so on. Uh yeah, I'm tested. So I'm exactly. definitely... That's the way I told you in the beginning when you asked me how did you come up with the idea? And I told you that we were looking to make a game which you would play sometime after work, you know, I mean, which doesn't require you to, like, spend countless hours and grind, you know. I, I mean, personally, as a game developer, I think those type of the games are things of the past. The MMORPGs were good back in early 2000s and, uh, like, 2009, nine, eight. you know. I mean, I think right now people don't have much time. They don't have so much time to grind. So games should be, like, really competitive, interactive, and that's the kind of experience we're trying to build. Mm hmm No, I get your point. That's why there's no story lane, you know, there's no story, story mode. Mm hmm Yeah, I think it's uh, some, on one side, I agree. On the other side, when you think back on, on Corona, I think there were a lot of people who, who started gaming and so on. And, you know, it's it's like, highly addictive once you get into it you you got a real hard time coming out of it again but i i get your point because you always have to consider as a developer you like you know was is it let's say we'll talk about the development managing a little bit right there's a mm -hmm. you should also you should understand which kind of te task requires what right with the story telling there's a lot of scripting you know so for three guys to make a story, we would probably work one year on the story itself, not the blockchain mechanics. So for you, in order to be successful, you, you need to understand what kind of business you can pull off, what kind of skills you have to pull off that business, you know? And I see, I, like, I, I'm from, I, I live in Sacramento, it's like nearby the Silicon Valley. I see how many startups failed simply because they, yeah, they, they took something that, was above their head you know what i'm trying to say mm -hmm. that's why we never tapped into the mmorpg this is a, a genre for a companies with a thousand employees not with the four and uh, i mean we took something that we think we can make it successful mm -hmm. no i get i get the point and i think it, it's working so yeah <laughs> i mean people play we as i uh, showed you the graph we have a like what a 23 daily active users with the two new players this week it's not the big numbers but this is the active product numbers and for the amount of holders and for the amount of awareness that we have this is actually the great numbers i think yeah. and you know they are growing like we j i just started sharing these numbers with the community the last week and let's see, you know, I mean, we, we are not hiding anything. We, I call it the adoption report where people actually, actually can see that the product that they invest, that they believe it's actually been used, you know.
Mm -hmm. Yeah. You need, you need like people who are interested and it's like really hard, you know, because I think a lot of people are not aware of that. If you want to make a good game, there are normally millions of dollars going into that game for development, marketing, and most of these games already got a, like an existing user base, you know, like for example, when you say EA or something, you know, they just put out a game, put it in the play store and they already got a huge audience. So for, for project like yours, it's like, Mm, how shall I say it? The s small numbers are much more recognizable if you if you get them to 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 play your product and just have fun with it because it's, yeah it, with the game developments like this if uh, if you have some numbers and you see them grow when you have a future if you don't have any numbers it means nobody needs your work you know that's it so is this normal in the in the gaming industry that that uh, games just start slowly over time and then some sometimes there is a certain point where it just goes off because this I'm not hundred percent normal for the indie publishers like VR. And as you said, the like people like a Rockstar, EA, they have existing audience, you know, and they just cater to to, to the existing audience. And this is like our first venture. And you know, I mean it's as you see our audience is forming and this is actually the early days when it happens. Mm -hmm. So would you say Voxnet or your plans for Voxnet are something like creating a gaming brand, but in the web free space, which one day will be called in the same sentences as Rockstar or EA? Would this you be something? Nailed it. That's exactly what our plan was just to become a household name. And not by just talking big, you know, loud words, but by actually giving people something that they can go through, experience, evaluate, and see see where it's going, you know, and decide for themselves. So you're you're more the kind of guy who just likes to to deliver, no bragging, no show off, just deliver, 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 deliver. Yeah, and... You have you have ninety nine people in the you know bragging. Do, do you really need another guy bragging? I don't think so. No, me neither. And it's really hard to, you know, it's really, I mean, you seen what happened with the chart. You was talking about the chart, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, I mean, for for us, it's it's like, I mean, when, when a lot of people were saying, like, when, when there was no volume, they were saying, oh, the project is dead, you know? But they actually never bothered to come into the Telegram room and to see what's going on. And... Yeah, I mean, the thing about the Voxnet, we already spent one year and we are really committed, you know, it's not going to die because it, it, it's pretty much, it's it's our child that grows on the back of us. And as long as we exist, it's going to exist, you know. And if people are playing, it means that someone needs my work and I'm going to work for them, even if it's only 27 people. Mm. No, no, I, I get the point. And sometimes it's like, really really hard but I, I appreciate that you you put so much effort into it yeah because... i mean everything is possible with the hard work and consistency you know and we're being consistent no matter how many months it's been after the launch no matter what the charts say we've been consistent with the development mm -hmm. i think one of the things we we all should raise a little awareness is um don't just put uh, potential monetary benefits in 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 the front. You know, you have to to think about the, the products behind all of this. You know, because like you said, people were mentioning yeah, the project project is dead because of the chart. And like I mentioned earlier, it's 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 like a pity. You know, you you have so much people which are not looking at the project and say, okay they got a solution for a problem or they got something which people are willing to buy, to play, to use because of certain reasons, entertainment uh, or, or something, but, or let's say for making a living, that's, that's also a good, good reason for me. If you say, okay, we got a game, which a lot of people play and it's 
will be able to make a living of it because you you got entertainment for other people other people can watch it you know you can build a whole economy around this 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 product yeah and most of the people are just like yeah, okay is the chart going up or is the chart going down you know cheating out with x2 and something and i really hope that one day people will will change a little because i think some some awareness of of gains for sure we all hear some somehow for the the profit you know but if you want to make like sustainable profit you have to invest sustainable and not just pump your money in every shit coin where people everybody knows nine of ten nine out of ten people are gonna lose their money and one is like winning but everyone is still wasting their money you know yeah yeah no i i, I mean our project not a speculation it's a working sustainable model you know and it's just gonna be better and better yeah i can't i can't wait for the future and i promise you i think i'll mm -hmm. i'll make it this month in the next in the next few days i'm gonna try the game and then i'll let you know then you get like a, a written user experience guide so yeah please i mean when, whenever you would actually join and play a couple of wager matches with us, you, you would actually feel why the people is going to buy this product. You would feel the same emotions that they're going to feel, and you would you'd see what would make, it them, would make it attractive. I'm really looking forward to it. I um, still got a question. Um, was there a pre-sale, and are there still pre-sale tokens which are going to be unlocked anytime soon? There was a pre-sale uh, no, end of November. I, I can uh, post a link if you want. Are there still tokens locked which are going to be released anytime soon? There's only like, I think, I believe 8% locked or something like this. Okay. I can also, if you give me one minute. Sure, sure. I, I, I can get you the, you know, the unwasting yeah. schedule. Yeah, but 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 it's worth to mention that what's locked is the liquidity and the treasury the wallet. So no pre-sale uh, for investors locked. So that was unlocked long time ago. So no yeah, more. Yeah. I mean, the pre-sale was uh, three months ago. You, you can see that we had uh, three months to air out everyone who not believes in the product. You know. So mm -hmm. let's see. And also to mention, you guys got a KYC and an audit. Yeah, we also of course. It in the post for everyone who wants to to have a look from Solid Proof. Yep, we do. I'm just trying to pull up the vesting schedule for you really quick. So whenever I got an idea about a great game mode or something like that, I uh, I can talk to you. Yeah, shoot me DM, of course. Because normally, you know, I'm I'm one of the guys who is like always when when I'm doing an AMA. It's it's easier in German. Somehow it works in English. But whenever I have an AMA, you know, and I really think about the the, the, the whole thing, there are thousands of things which comes to my mind. And By the way, our, our game has a German language. We have a multi language support. Ah, that's great. I mean, so I you can play your your native language if you want. It also has like Chinese. I mean, we can add any language. Because we already built the multi-language support. <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay, one second. I'm going to post the screenshot of the wasting schedule right here. Yeah, and also we have a security partnership with Unicrypt. So uh, we have we have a document that we did for investors. Uh, we, I, I can share the Google Doc here in, uh, on the chat. So everyone who wants to take a look uh, in details, uh, it has all the details there. Thanks a lot. Really appreciate it. Don't See, there's a pre-sale link, and then if you go to the services, I think, and you go to the token locker, in, mm -hmm. and, you, and you specify the contract name, you would see the, the Westing. But I made a screenshot for you, and it's right there on top. There is there is one question I got. Um, you were saying you gonna the Vox network is gonna be a network. So, because you mentioned that your audience is like the multiplayer battle arena game, um, mm -hmm. will there be also 
different types of games in the later future on Voxnet? Or could there be like games for like uh, like uh, open world uh, multiplayer, but with some kind of story mode? As, as, I, as, I, as I mentioned before that, you know, the, I don't, it's all, you know, when you build a product, it's all about what you believe or you don't believe, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think that which you just described to me, it's a basic MMORPG with the, with the script, with the with NPC and quests, you know? I don't think that the market needs this kind of product right now. And I don't mm -hmm. think that this kind of product can be successful, you know, with the team of four people. It's 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 not the right time and place for this kind of genre. It, of okay. course, of course, we can make any game. I mean, you know, as, as same as we made this game or this race game, you know, we can make any game. But does it really make sense to you know invest your time in it? That's a question. Mm -hmm. No, no, I got you. Got your point. Um, just a question from my side. Um, do you think? Would it be technically possible to to create? I mean, we we somehow talked about hosting a tournament with with friends in the beginning. That when you were saying, "Yeah, we're gonna open up a lobby and through a link, everyone can join." But would you think it could be possible to to make the game playable on on Telegram? So, like. It is possible, but in this case, we need to have a dedicated server and move all the logic to that server. And then we should make a bot, which is gonna, you know, start up the lobby on that server. It is possible in future, yes, but not possible today. Okay, because I think um, just just from my experience, um, for example, in the German group, we often play with this bot called Gamey. And if if it's easy for people just to, to, to click on a bot in Telegram and play this game uh, within the chat and with a leaderboard and so on with their own The community. thing is, they still will need to log in. They can just click, because, the, the, you know, as a developer, I see the picture you, like, just literally, you click and you play. No, that's not going to work because they still need to log in because we have a backend. The system needs to know who exactly you are. So that way, it you know all the monetary processes are being are being spread out properly. So you because couldn't... you do have like your personal account, you know your personal gaming account, and uh, all your dividends are being accumulated in that account. So we need to know who you are. You know what I'm trying to say? You can't just yeah. click. You need to log in. But couldn't you? Could you? Could you um, combine that with a wallet connect that you get a uh for on the on the on the back end that when and you that's what we're doing right now uh actually because uh at first we built our own wallet connect and it was like a system that uses your login and password plus your wallet and forms the unique id and mm -hmm. now we are trying to make the with the wallet connect where your uh, address is going to be actually your unique id mm -hmm. and this is actually the, the one update that i was mentioning we're going to do this week Okay, and what about if you would do it like uh, just a random casual mode where you where you don't really have to to connect your wallet just as a sort of um, incentment to to uh, get people in touch with your game? Because I think if you would have something like a Telegram bot, it's just my opinion, um, where people can play the or people can get the game experience you know and have fun and then they get the the, the the knowledge okay you can just play this on casual mode here on telegram for example but you could also just go to our website and connect your wallet and then you can also earn money i think this could be a useful tool to get people in touch with your project because a lot of communities in general are interested in let's say it, let's call it products which keeps the community engaged you know like is it a game a quiz or whatever yeah yeah i mean you know we actually it's a good idea because we, we, when we were thinking about the you know um, automated tournament system 
whenever thought about it in the form of the Telegram bot. But that that it would be like a separate app on the website, you know, where people would can go and just schedule an event. But it's actually a great idea. You get me thinking about the Telegram bot, you know? Because to be honest, I would love to play it myself here on Telegram with the community. And I think the game could have the potential to, to, to really keep people engaged because at the moment I'm, you know, every, every now and then I'm going to play games with the community because kind of a gamer, a lot of people from our community just, just like these games. And we, we just have to play these really old school games. You know, it's not like even you say like 2000 uh, mobile phone graphics and you know, like, like snake or something really primitive like um you know this 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 up and down things uh this ninja thing i don't know gravity ninja and sort kind of things and if you just just raise the bar and the standard from the telegram game bots because i personally don't know any really good telegram bots i just used to play some kind of mario kart through a link over the community but this wasn't really successful because um, the people had to download an extra app and then go to the app and, and everything on the phone. Uh, yeah, but sorry, a lot of words. Um, I think it would be really cool and I would love to play it. And I would also love to, to help you guys promote this, this game bots in a lot of channels. And I think a lot of other communities would be interested in that. So just, just as a thinking thing, you know what I mean? No, totally. It's a great idea, you know. I just, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you the timelines right now, you know, because we have this never-ending list, <laughs> which which only growing. <laughs> but it's yeah. all right, you know, we will get to it. No, I think I'm I'm going to really write that down because this, this would be something really great. And I think you would really benefit from it. No, 100%. But... Uh, because because with the fir first of all, it's a really easy... Um, point of access you know and the easiest it's to get in it's pretty much it will attract more people you know that's my point because the product should be easy you know it, it shouldn't be complicated yeah I, I get it so so people just just want to to come in and play just just two clicks three clicks with 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 less safety and and play it yeah but there's you see there's still some trade-offs you know when you're and that's why it's it's a little bit right now like for example you know it, they have to go through a little process to in order to play the game, to, to go to the website, uh, create an account, and connect their wallet. You know, I, I mean, I understand that it's uh, it's a little it's you know um, time consumable stuff, but it is a little trade off for you in order for you to have all your fun secure. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I get uh, totally. Get it. With that, it would be much more secure to build our own solution rather than rely on third-party solutions. Mm -hmm. I think just just something I, I am thinking about again. I think one of one of the problems is um, we are currently somehow in a shift from Web two to Web three. You know, but you you. I'm I'm kind of missing, you know, that the web freeness in in this whole Telegram space because you you got all this like the community environment, but you're still kind of missing the the things you can do and interact with the community in, a, in an easy and playful way. You know, you can just like for example, just just host a tournament in some kind of game in your community with with two clicks where people can talk with each other hang out have fun you know and yeah i think that's something we should really work on that we get more like web freeness into this this whole telegram space yeah i, I totally agree with you i mean it's 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 it will be cool you know if the lobby can be set it up as simple with the bot from the telegram i think it's it's a cool step so, but anyway, we are talking for over an hour now. I'd say I'm I'm through with my questions. If you guys got questions or if you first up want to, to add something, Sixel, we're going to let them do this. So Sixel is gone again. So, guys, 
have you got any questions yet? Or was it pretty well explained? I mean, my questions are answered, so... Yeah, let me know, guys, if you have any questions. You can just raise your arm or type in the chat. I know as soon as it comes to interaction... Ah, I missed the question. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Um, oh, there are a lot of questions. Um, so just let me slide up in the chat a little and then we're gonna go through them. So, Kale was just saying he loves the dedication. She just keep up building and grow no matter what. So, a few questions from you. What is the progress for the iOS? When will be players be able to earn on mobile? So, can the I answer this? What? Can I answer this one? Yeah, sure. So, as I already said, the iOS, pretty much we're just waiting for the registration paperwork to come in. And uh, people already can earn on the mobile. They can just download the APK, which is merged with our backend, and they can just download as long as they have an established account, you know. Okay. How can Voxnet bridge the gap to attract more traditional players and educate about the benefits of blockchain-based games? Basically, this is a question to Gus. Um, I'm sure he has covered it partially. I'm, and if he wants to, he can answer it right now, you know. I'm not sure if he's... Sorry, yeah, in, yeah. He's so, sorry, guys. Uh, can you can you tell me the question? I was actually answering one community member. <laughs> yes. How can Wolfsnet bridge the gap to attract more traditional players and educate about the benefits of blockchain-based games? Definitely, definitely. So once once we're on a platform like Google Play with the full version on there, we will be targeting more or less uh, the gaming audience and we will be working on an SEO a, a, and a, ASO strategy specific for Google Play uh, in order to bring traditional players because the game is playable and it's easy to use with the Wallet Connect feature in it. If, if the users don't want to connect the wallet yet, uh, I mean, we will see if we would need uh, to implement any type of strategy where we let them play and then lure them in. It's, that's up to the data and how the user behavior uh, exists on the, on the game. And at the, the first, very first beginning, since we want to grow the adoption, it makes sense for us to target the Web3 gamers, Web3 players who are usually have high stickiness and uh, invest in NFTs and bring in revenue. And as we grow that, we start to, with the routing system kicking in, uh, kicked in, and people start to earn more NFTs and trading kicks in, we can start to expand this to a broader base where we can start to afford it as, as a game, as a, as a company. All right, thank you. Um, another question, is there an info page for game like attack, defense, damage, relations, or weapons, stats, etc.? Yeah, I, I just I have answered that, and I'm just going to pause the screenshot in a second. Ah, okay. You are a little yeah. below. While Gus was taking care of that, I was doing the other things simultaneously. Ah, okay, okay. Using time efficiently, that's what we do here. Yeah, I was just, I was just about to say, yeah. you don't waste any time. So Jason's still writing separate. Oh. Yeah, it's separated. Yeah, every every piece, like every weapon, hat, or body part, has uh, has ability to hold its own stats. And we also have a separated stat system where you can buy stat books. You know, like at first the idea was we actually build it, but right now I'm thinking to move. Uh, they actually take those books off from the store as a stat books. So you can actually um, permanently increase the of your character. But now, since we have a loot system with the rare items, and we actually made a craft system, the way it works, when you have five rare items, let's say each rare item give 0.1 to bonus to the stat, and now you have five. You can combine them into the Prisma stat. And for example, this particular item will give you, let's say, plus three permanent to your stat. 
So we have like all these little, you know, we, we, the, the, we have a stat system that is just with the items and then we have a, like a separate stat system that you get through the loot. So that's how it works. We have a stat books, but I, I, I wanted to remove them. Okay, okay, sound good. Thank you for information, sir. Yeah, thank you. I, uh, thank you for the question. So, guys, any other questions? Maiden still tipping? So, but it was nice to hear you, Jason. It's always, it's always like most of the people are shy when it comes to, to talking in a VC. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they can type, you know, it's fine. I mean, so, if they don't have a questions right now, um, they can always come to the Telegram, you know, and ask questions. Why not? Uh, <laughs> Tim was asking if he can please be a beta tester for the car game. Of course, Tim. I mean, your questions have been covered, you know. Uh, I think you... He can he can um, read it or hear it in the in the recording. So just you can hear it. So guys, still got any questions? Otherwise, I think I'm gonna leave it be for tonight. I think Sixel has some more things to do. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. So when should I can get to the boat, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go to the boat, my friend. I'd, I'd really, really celebrate it. Yeah, well, if you guys don't have any more questions for me, or if you do later, you you always know where to find me. Thank you okay. for so much for giving me this opportunity to present my project. Thank you for much for having the patience to listen to my horrible accent and you know my stream of thoughts. But I do really appreciate, it and I want to invite everyone just to come and play the game. I mean, you all you all get one token for free in two thousand arrows just to try the game. So you're the games, ah, uh, guys, play the game. It's really fun. I just watched it, and it really looks fun and. I'm going to let you know how I think it when I played it. I'm going to hit you up with that six low. And Thank you. Also, yeah. And also from my side, thanks a lot for taking your time. I really appreciate it that you're going to be here with us for like an hour and told us about your projects. Uh, thanks a lot for just building something great, you know, and, and not putting the monetary things above everything you know that's that's really rare to see and i really really appreciate it no we do the old school we build from the bottom of our heart and all the other great things will just come you know the universe will help if you do everything right the universe will help you yeah that's that's a that's a good way of thinking just do something good and then just just give and then you will get a lot more back you know just provide people with benefits Absolutely. I like your way of thinking, man. Really have to say Yeah. <laughs> Comes with experience, man. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. As as you get older, you know, like it it, it yeah. kinda of shifts, you know, you 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 start to think a little deeper, although I'm just twenty seven, so I got yeah. a few few more years to come. Yeah, when you get the family your priorities change a little bit, you know. Yeah, you you got a family, or what? And then then some some a lot of priorities shifted. Yeah, hundred percent. You just start thinking differently. That's true. I I always think about you know this feeling when when you got a child, you know, and it it looks for, at you for the first time when you you're gonna have it on your hand, you know, what what kind of of feeling this has to be. Oh, you're soon for the surprise, man. <laughs> uh. You're twenty-seven <laughs> only. Everything is ahead. Ah, oh, nice. So, again, thanks a lot. It it was Thank a pleasure you. to you. 
and thanks a lot for for listening today guys um like we said if you got any questions feel free to ask anytime and have a nice evening bye thank you bye guys thank you thank you guys thank you